Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 20th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the best information for where you are. Still watching our two storms, Hurricane Grace in the southern Gulf of Mexico and Tropical Storm Henri, which is moving northward toward New England. We're going to spend just a couple minutes here focusing on Grace first, and then we'll get to Henri. This is the infrared satellite loop from this morning showing that the storm after coming off the Yucatan Peninsula is starting to recover and regenerate convective organization near the inner core. And in infrared satellite imagery here, we see a curved element of convection around the eastern side, indicating that a forming eye wall is beginning to take shape. And we can see that in a microwave pass from a few hours before this recording, showing that the deep convection is indeed trying to form a ring around the center. And so we are seeing an eye structure beginning, and that is a sign that grace is re-intensifying over the water of the Bay of Campeche. And the recon data from the plane that's in there now has been showing hurricane force winds mostly on the north side here in purple. And we've seen the pressure lower a few millibars from 984 to 981 millibars during the course of this mission as the hurricane has been tracking westward while the plane has been in there. And some additional strengthening is possible prior to landfall. The environment is in general favorable and the National Hurricane Center forecast does anticipate some strengthening as this heads generally west south westward toward the coastline where a hurricane warning is in place for this section of Mexico. And we're likely just over 12 hours away from that landfall now. So it's possible we could see winds increase from their current values of about 85 miles per hour to something closer to around 100 miles per hour or so by the time landfall occurs. The formation of an eye like this suggests that we definitely will see some additional intensification before that time. Storm surge and heavy rainfall, mudslides and flash flooding concerns both at the coastline and inland over eastern Mexico. So everyone, please stay safe over the next couple of days. All right, switching back to the big view, that's Grace, soon to move inland over Mexico. We're going to talk about Tropical Storm Henri now, the last remaining storm in the Atlantic. Nothing much else happening out here for the moment. And Henri is beginning to show signs that it could start to get better organized. It's been at roughly the same intensity for the last couple of days as it has been doing battle with vertical shear that has been holding the system down and keeping it at tropical storm intensity. Winds are estimated at about 65 miles per hour at a maximum right now. And in the infrared loop, we can see that there's an expansive area of deep convection, lots of outflow, this milky white cirrus here kind of curving clockwise out away from the center, indicating that there is strong convection here that's been going off for the last several hours and trying to expand toward the northern side of the system. If we look at the visible loop, we'll see that there is still some evidence of that shear having an impact. The low-level cloud lines here show you that there's rotation near the northern edge of the deep convection, which is here in, in intense white. You can see the textured cloud tops there indicating the deep updrafts, but we're not seeing a lot of convection on the northern side still, and we're starting to get some rotation of this new convection around, perhaps more toward that north side, but that process has not yet completed. So at the moment, it seems like the low-level center is still slightly tilted to the northwest of where the mid-level center is due to that shear. Now, an ASCAT pass from a couple of hours before this video indicated that while the center is likely right about here where we saw it on visible satellite imagery, there is an extension or a notch toward the southeast where that mid-level center is under the convection, indicating that there may be some attempt at restacking the vortex and aligning the mid-level and surface centers underneath the deep convection. And if this is able to happen over the next day or so, it would herald the beginning of an intensification period for Henri as it begins to move northward. You can see all the strong wind here in purple on the east side of the circulation, and all of this flux of moisture toward the north should eventually allow convection to wrap around the north side, and within about a day we should see a more symmetric looking circulation. If we look at water vapor satellite imagery, one of the reasons we're expecting Henri to intensify is that the shear that's been impacting the storm for the last couple of days is lessening today and should be light by tomorrow. Right now we've had kind of a ridge over this part of the Atlantic and some of that northeasterly flow has been hitting Henri on the north side, causing it to tilt toward the south as we just saw. But we have an upper level low developing over Ohio and this is starting to generate more of a southwesterly or southerly flow aloft 
that is starting to move toward Henri and kind of remove this northeasterly flow that's been there from the opposite direction. So this will help move Henri toward the north, but also lessen the wind shear as winds in the upper and lower levels will be similar by the time we get towards Saturday. So this will likely be a more favorable environment as Henri makes its move poleward, and we do expect the storm to become a hurricane at some point tomorrow or early Sunday. Now let's take a look at the track forecast, and we've been talking for a couple of days now about there's, how there's been uncertainty in Henri's northward move, whether or not it would be able to stay offshore of New England, or whether it would come into New England and become a problem with impacts to land areas. Now over the last couple of days we've had a lot of reconnaissance data with aircraft flying around Henri and dropping drop sons that take measurements over the vertical profile of the atmosphere around the storm and help the models see better what the current state of the atmosphere is. And so we've seen a decrease in uncertainty over the last several model runs, and we have more agreement today on where Henri is likely to go. And just to show you as an example, this is the GFS 500 millibar chart showing where Henri is now, and this area of yellow, and if you can see the wind barbs, they're showing rotation here. This is the direction of the wind flow over Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, showing uh, an upper level low here, and this is starting to generate southwesterly flow that's going to usher Henri toward the north. And we have an upper level ridge to the north of that low here, clockwise flow, that is going to move toward the east and combine with this upper low to start pivoting Henri more toward the north or even northwest as it makes that move. So we'll see on the GFS here that we start to get this interaction, upper low here, Henri here, and the two are going to try to pinwheel around each other in a way. This is what areas of low pressure do when they get close to each other. And here comes that ridge to the north of the upper level low. And this is providing perhaps more of a northwestward directed flow as this ridge connects to the ridge to the east of Henri. And so we get all this flow toward the northwest. And this ends up ushering Henri right toward New England on this particular model forecast. This is the upper low again over Maryland by very early Sunday morning. This is in the overnight hours Saturday, very early Sunday morning. And this ends up moving toward eastern Long Island and inland over Connecticut on this particular model run of the GFS by Sunday morning or afternoon. And one of the remaining difficulties with this particular forecast is to what degree this upper low will, for lack of a better term, suck Henri in. And we could see a range of end game tracks that range from Henri gliding north northeast toward close to Cape Cod like this, to bending slightly more inland over Connecticut and maybe Long Island, to even some kind of a hook that's more toward New York City and northern Jersey. And so the angle at the end as this is approaching the coast, that's still the big question mark. What has changed today is the confidence level in whether this will impact land. And compared to yesterday in prior days, models have come into much better agreement. This is an example for you to see this. This is the GFS ensemble of 30 possible futures for Henri. And the cloud of possible solutions is now majority over land. So this is showing that the likely scenario is now a landfall in New England somewhere, but you can see that there is still spread here. And as I mentioned, there's a range of possible outcomes based on how the track bends at the end due to that upper level low and the precise positioning of where Henri is on final approach. And that will matter a lot. We may still have some question marks around that for another day or so before it becomes perfectly clear. But what is becoming clear is that odds of intense impacts to New England have gone dramatically up over the last couple of days, and a landfall is now the expected outcome. So now that we know that, the question becomes, what kind of impacts can you expect in New England? And there is some nuance here. New England hurricanes are a unique breed for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is the fact that the Gulf Stream runs to the south of New England, and this basically is a line demarcating very warm water to its south and much cooler water off the coast of New England itself to the north of the Gulf Stream. So all this cold water here does provide somewhat of a protective barrier. So this is Henri on the h wharf model showing it moving over the very warm water. And it will stay over this warm water for quite some time. And even through Saturday evening, we may still have Henri over this Gulf Stream area southeast of New Jersey. 
and it will be likely looking pretty scary at this particular time. Given that we expect Henri to intensify, we could even see an eye on satellite imagery and it could look like a classic hurricane by the time it gets to this point. We expect it to be near its peak intensity by the time it gets up here. And it's pretty close to New England, so that's likely to look scary at the time. The good news is that Henri is moving much more slowly than a typical New England hurricane. Typically, New England landfalls are racing northward with tremendous speed and when they move over this cold water, they don't have enough time to weaken very much before making landfall. So for that reason, New England can still get pretty strong hurricanes. But this one is moving a little bit more slowly. So it gets, you know, so on the H wharf here, we get six or three, six, nine, 12, 15 hours before it reaches Long Island on this model. And the result of that is 15 hours over cold water does weaken the wind a fair bit before the hurricane gets to the coastline. The caveat to that is that if Henri is pretty strong here already, say it has winds over 100 miles per hour, it may still have winds of hurricane force 75 miles per hour by the time it gets to the coast. So while it will be weakening, perhaps a fair bit on approach, it could still be dangerous and we could still have winds that can generate storm surge, ocean water causing flooding onto the coastline, power outages due to falling trees and other hazards related to wind. Now we can look at the GFS just to get kind of a basic idea of what the wind field will look like. And this is early hours Sunday morning, kind of overnight here, showing a potential Henri moving through here. And this is a typical size on modeling, showing the wind field of about this strength. Purple here indicates winds of about 60 miles per hour over the ocean. And this is moving north northwestward toward eastern Long Island at this time. And you'll see how if I go back a step, so you'll see how it's it's reaching a pretty strong intensity just before it moves on shore. But as it moves on shore, the wind field is weakening as it moves over that cold water. So the winds will be in the process of dying down, but again, st could still be dangerous. One thing I want to point out here, we're talking about this stuff like a, a potential left hook as it's moving on shore and, you know, hurricanes and everything. But this is not Hurricane Sandy, which was the last major storm to impact this area. This is nothing like that. Sandy was immense, had tremendous potential to bring storm surge and wind damage over a vast area, even inland, and it was transitioning to a non-tropical storm as it moved on shore. And that, for reasons I won't get into now, made that storm particularly dangerous. This one has some fortunate aspects to it. While this could be dangerous on the coastline, it's going to dissipate very quickly once it moves inland. You'll see on the GFS by very early Monday morning, not even 24 hours after landfall, there's very little left of Henri inland. There's almost no wind left. And while we still may have some gusty winds at the coast at this time, the storm disappears very quickly and it's basically gone by Monday afternoon. This is because there's no no strong interaction with non-tropical processes that would cause this to maintain itself as an entity inland. So we're likely to see maybe a 24 hour period where severe impacts could be possible, but not much after that point. So that's the good news. The bad news here is that this could generate a fair amount of rainfall as well over this area because this storm is moving unusually slowly for a hurricane moving into New England. So we could get a lot of rain falling in the area near the landfall point for about 12 to 24 hours, and that could cause some inland freshwater flooding problems in addition to the coastal flooding problems due to salt water being pushed inland by the wind. So I'll go through some of the hazards here on the NHC forecast, which has shifted westward and now shows a landfall just east of Long Island near Connecticut, Rhode Island border, and a hurricane watch is in effect from Long Island to Cape Cod. And we're likely to see, again, a slowdown here. These points are 12 hours spaced apart from Sunday evening to Monday morning. So this is slowing up as it moves toward the coast and weakening as it moves toward the coast. You can see it, they have it dipping from an H to an S, which means it's moving from hurricane intensity to just below hurricane intensity right at the time of landfall. So winds are expected to be 70, 75 miles per hour at a maximum as this moves ashore. We may see some adjustments to that based on how strong Henri gets at its peak intensity, which is likely to be right about here on Saturday evening. And when we see what it looks like at that point, we'll pretty much know exactly how it's going to look when it crosses the coastline. But at the moment, there is enough uh, threat to warrant a hurricane watch here for that wind potential. And there's going to be the potential for storm surge associated with that push of water, especially on the eastern side of the landfall point. So you can see up to five feet of storm surge inundation. That means about three to five feet of water above 
normally dry ground and even a few feet as far west as New Jersey. And these will get adjusted if we see a shift in the track. This assumes a track basically like this. If we see the track get farther west, for instance, we'll see the maximum value shift farther west as well. That'll be a hazard near the coast. We'll also have the potential for high wind. This is the plot that shows you your probability of receiving tropical storm force winds, that is winds greater than about 40 miles per hour, and you can see basically the track of Henri outlines a swath of risk. Everything within about yellow color here is a 30% chance of receiving 40 mile per hour or stronger wind. So that gives you an idea of the threat area based on the current NHC forecast, and it shows you that while the forecast is currently kind of on the southeast side of New England, there is risk for high wind even farther west in places like New York City and New Jersey, and we'll be watching to see if the track makes any adjustments over the next day or so. And finally, the inland flooding threat is beginning to show up as elevated risk here on this forecast. This is a forecast through day three, so on Sunday. This does not yet extend through Sunday night and Monday morning, so we could see these risks go up on this map in subsequent forecasts. But you can see right now, focused near the landfall point, which is again expected to be roughly here on the current forecast encompassing Boston, Long Island, and most of Connecticut and Rhode Island. So we'll continue to watch this as it develops multiple hazards possible on this forecast. Not nearly as bad as something like Sandy, but something that is definitely a significant threat and you should be preparing for and make sure you have a plan of action here as we are now looking at impacts being likely and this is now the expected outcome. So take care, be safe, and prepare as Henri nears. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.